Henry! Oh, don't tell me, Henry! Please! <laughs> Welcome to the Blind Wave Podcast. This week we're talking all about one of our favorite shows, so much so that it's in our S tier from yeah. whenever we ranked it this year. And Gravity uh, Falls. Unanimously as well. I, yeah, unanimously. unanimously. Yeah. Normally Rick disagrees. Indeed. We did. Or places it there solely. Indeed. On his own, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it was a lot of fun. I was talking before about, like I have kids, yeah. and Eric was asking me about yeah. Are they going to watch it? Mm-hmm. They had already watched it before we started. Mm. Um, I, I had heard about Gravity Falls from them, but I didn't know what all that entailed, which was yeah. a lot. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, we we had one time where I was sitting at, uh, I think I was sitting at the dinner table with everybody. And I started saying like, oh yeah, we're watching Gravity Falls uh-huh. and like describing kind of where I'm at and stuff. And Kanan, my, one of my younger ones was like, oh wait, uh, what about this episode? And started naming off something. And everyone at the table was like, stop! Yeah. And like, he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, we just didn't know what you were going to say. I went up to a toy show to, with my brother and, and my nephews, and he told me before I got there, he kind of like sat him down. He's like, look, your Uncle Eric's going through Gravity Falls on his YouTube channel. You can't talk to him about it as much as you want because you don't <laughs> know where he is. You know, it was a whole thing. So Yeah. Now I started no, showing exactly. my daughter to it, and she loves it. But it's weird because she's also... She likes our reactions better. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Interesting. Huh. Is that the first time something like that's happened? <laughs> yeah, she as likes far as I know, reaction. those are really the only reactions that she watches. Huh. Are well, we should on. always stress that uh, Blind Wave and their reactions are not a market substitute, according to the DMCA. It's true, but yeah. she, she's also watching the show itself. <laughs> yes, okay, I got you. Watch both. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, it's one of those shows where sometimes when something's on a poll or we're getting ready to start it i have a certain idea of what it could be i only knew that this was a cartoon i had no idea sure. that it was going to be a mystery show and a deciphering show and and we did not know the rabbit hole we yeah. were going down no yeah. I, mean, I, I was getting ready to like okay you know like like ben 10 right now we're enjoying ben 10 but ben 10 feels like it's a show aimed at kids that adults can also Enjoy. I feel like sure. Gravity Falls kind of superseded that a little bit. Where like it wasn't necessarily aimed at kids; it was aimed at everyone. Kids just what it was marketed to. Sure. I, I think it's been interesting lately. We've yeah. gone through uh, more Western animation stuff. Yeah. That yeah. I didn't watch and just seeing, like I think there's a time when Western animation was that's kid stuff, you know. Yeah. But I think there's it's been a commercial. Yeah. There's been more and more though that I think is growing. Where like sure kids can enjoy this, but it's also made for other people to enjoy. And that's the best kind of show is where it's like, oh, here's Gravity Falls. Kids can watch it. Like, my kids watch it. They love it. They love Seuss, you know? Yeah. The jokes in it are funny. Yeah. But also, for just four grown men, we had a lot of fun watching that, too. And I love seeing just something that's not just, this is a quote-unquote kid show. I like just having more to it. And this definitely had more mystery, puzzles, you know? I yeah. Love when we um, was, were uh, wrecking the shows. I, huh? No, nah, it was just great. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, when we were wrecking the shows, I said, like, you know, I think it's easier for a more mature show to be an S because they just have no restrictions. They can do yeah. whatever they need to do in order to do the vision. But like mm-hmm. Gravity Falls, because it does need to be family friendly, like they have these built-in constraints. And within those constraints, they made an amazing show. They yeah. flourished. They did. And not for nothing, but also when it comes to Blind Wave, it holds a special place and it's kind of off to its on its own in that it ruined our scheduling <laughs> because we would watch the show and then in season two they're like you know you can find a key and we're like okay well we'll give that a shot or whatever you know we had previously been doing the, the the cryptograms and the stuff at the end but the key was the thing that really pushed it from this is really fun to this is an experience well, it's it an obsession from, like 
Rick needs to solve this too. We all need to we work all together. Need to solve yeah, it. sure, yeah. <laughs> and it would like I'm not kidding. Like it would take three times longer than it should have. You know, we could have watched a whole other episode in that amount of time it took to find that. Sometimes, key. Yeah. sometimes, yeah. yeah. There was definitely one that it could have been us watching that show like three times before yeah. we found the key. Yeah, but yeah, it would have been like hated us show as a kid because i've always loved ciphers and riddles mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff so like it it really brought me back to my childhood yeah. learning all that stuff for the first time mm-hmm. and yeah it was so much fun so yeah, much fun and i don't i can't Just, think of any other show that we've covered that has that type of impact on our schedule <laughs> no i get you like i think there's sometimes that things go long because we have a yeah. lot more to talk about star wars i feel like typically goes longer sure <gasps> what could that be yeah like like look at on my notes. Oh, yeah. Like, it looks like a madman's journal. Yeah. Just trying to figure out some of these things. I also have all my notes. This is my, all of my notes from Gravity Falls, season one and two, in oh, this sh- book, and I'll keep this. That was my bad <laughs> yeah. That's, I don't have my notes. <laughs> I missed the memo. <laughs> I was going to the bathroom and missed this part of it. I mean, the thing that I liked, too, was, like, towards the end, like, there were, like, two or three different puzzles going on. Like, Rick was solving some of them, and then I was solving other ones, and then, like, yeah. Well, the very first one, when I had no idea what to expect, like, I woke up at 6 a.m. on a Saturday. (laughs) It was just like, I'm going to go until I solve this. And it (laughs) took me, like, an hour. And then from there, like, it was that same way for the first half of the season or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I'm too new of a fan to have gone out and tried to search for other Gravity Falls reactions. But from what I understand, no one else did that. No really? one else went deep. You well, know what? Like we too is like, I don't you know, know if they mattered. Y- you could go look it up. <laughs> I know. It's like, what does yeah, it all mean? Could. But maybe there's more that we didn't know. You know? Oh, there's apparently that, uh, yeah, there's that's some the stuff. thing too. I'm is sure like, there is. how much of this stuff did we catch, and how much didn't we catch? Yeah. Now and we do have some. We do have some stuff that we're going to be going over that we actually don't know what it's going to be. It was provided uh, to us by Aiden. Who I want to thank Aiden for uh, coming along. It was. I think Gravity Falls was his first real reaction series editing for us. So. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a special one for him, too. Put his yeah. own codes in there as well. He did. He put his own codes in, in there every once in a while, including the last one has an actual key hunt that people <laughs> kept like messaging me, being like, okay, where's it at in the video? And I'm like, it's where we're talking. Find They're it. They're like, reaction or discussion. I'm like, we're speaking when it shows up. <laughs> <laughs> were they supposed to like answer it anywhere? Or? Uh, they, they, they could, if they find the key, they can uh, like, then go to the end card where there was a code in Arabesh. Yeah, they did solve it. it, it yeah, solve it. Okay. a lot of people solved it, but some people are still doing it right okay. now. It's cool. Yeah. Good. Well, I mean, Gravity Falls has been out for how many years, and we only just started solving yeah, it. Yeah, right. So it's something yeah. that can be enjoyed no matter when you watch it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, we're going to be checking out some clips here and uh, talking about them. You guys should be able to watch and hear them right and, here on the stream. Uh, if you guys have questions about things that we think about in Gravity Falls or just general things you want us to discuss, uh, down in the lower left-hand corner, you can click on the purple uh, bubble icon and channel. you can submit a question using channel points yes do that and i'm sure we will look at those here when we uh get towards the end of some to look it up but dare may said that we started gravity falls on its 10th anniversary it's crazy to think about i consider it to be so recent yeah it feels so <laughs> modern it doesn't feel 10 years old it does not yeah. at all all right well we're gonna check some stuff out here Was, so that is what he said backwards. Now, uh, Jake, we're, we're not getting any audio. Huh? I got it. I, I got it. it. Oh, I didn't hear shit. I heard exactly <laughs> what it said. Okay, well, <laughs> if you would, play it again, yeah. and I'm going to fix my stuff. I'm sorry, but I need to hear it again. <laughs> oh. That's so much better. Hearing hear it. it, hearing it, then reading it. Before all you read was <laughs> the, the couple lines there. Yeah. Um, can you go back, Jake, to where those letters are? The A X O T O L or whatever. Yeah. So that was the final key, wasn't it? A X O L O T O L. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I was gonna compare. Oxalotl. Yeah, axolotl. Yeah, that was it's the, the final little key. salamander guy. Oh, okay. We talked about it. Yeah, we had that. Yeah, on the thing. The Minecraft animal. So go a little forward, and he says, for Minecraft. My time has come to burn. I invoke the ancient power that I may return. All right. Story's not over. I would not 
Mind it off. Gravity Falls came back. Yeah. Wait, oh, so man. what's fuck yeah? What's this video from? Or is that so just this actually it backwards is, and we just yeah. We, we never this went is back just something to, like, hey, did you guys see this? Yeah, you're, uh, you know, we used your backwards app for so long, but I think in the moment we were so hyped we just didn't register to do Might it. Might have missed that one. <laughs> yeah. Probably true. I could or say I got that. cut out of the reaction. Or that. I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, we, we did get cut. That's what happened. Yeah. I said that in the video. <laughs> we knew it all along. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to make you feel dumb. <laughs> but I thought that, I don't know, that's interesting. Like, and what does that you mean? Know, at the end of the show, there was that statue of... Oh, he, a yeah. bill too, right? That's yeah. out there somewhere. Yeah. So, like, could there be another summer in the future? That'd be really fun. Yeah. Or is it something entirely different? So, is he like a a phoenix or something like that that he has to burn to yeah. come mm. back? Okay, that's it's cool. time to I mean, burn, it's... but he invokes the ancient power. Yeah, that's not necessarily a game changer for me in terms of like. Well, I always think that Bill, as the story needs, can do what he needs to do to come back, or absolutely, also, you know, but. This he's actually physically invoking a power to do it, right? Yeah. This is what it seems like, yeah. yeah. He's casting a spell. Yeah. Especially since it's being said backwards. Backwards message, backwards message. That damn that time. Was very funny. <laughs> I that couldn't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is backwards. What does it say? Oh, so good. Uh, in case it isn't obvious, I mean, we haven't stated it, but there's going to be Gravity Falls spoilers the whole podcast. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Definitely. Spoilers but ahead. Beware. And behind. I thought this was, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that was cool. Uh, yeah, definitely something that we missed in the uh, in the finale. I'm curious, like, what all, like, in the grand scheme of things, did we hit 90% of it or 50% of it? Sure. sure. You know? What all was missed? Yeah. All huh. right, so we have another video then, We got too? some stuff to watch, yeah. And this uh, next video is about six and a half minutes long? This one's about six minutes. So it's going to okay. be a little bit more time on this one. All right, so this is Alex Hirsch. The creator. Talking about Gravity cool. Falls that he created. Give it to me. We're talking about something. We'll see. I'd say if you're rewatching the series all over again, pay particular attention to the backgrounds. Okay. Hey, there's nothing creepy going on in this room. In Gideon Rises, we see a flashback of the hand of the unknown author writing the journals. We see a skull, we see a polished desk, but we also see a bit of a rainbow reflection. A mm -hmm. really keen-eyed fan might notice yeah. that inside the secret room in Carpet Diem, there is a triangular glass prism. Prism. It's casting a rainbow reflection. It's a subtle way to let you know that that room belonged to the author. Huh. When I was in middle school, I was in a oh. class. Nice, with, like, I like that. Who had no fault of his own, some really unusual acne. Every day was a little different. Show me, show me. So I would sort of chart the constellations from my sketchbook. <clears throat> and I remember one day he had a perfect Big Dipper, the exact right dots on his forehead. Really? That's how you got your nickname. I thought your parents so that's where it comes from? Huh. His first name. Dipper and Mabel's first names have a similarity, but I will not tell you what that similarity is. Now that we know Grunkle Stan is a twin brother when you watch an episode like Headhunters. You need anything? <laughs> I love this guy. Don't you go nowhere. You see how distraught he is that a wax double of him gets destroyed. You might understand the psychology hmm. there a little bit better. Wow, I didn't think about that. Wax Stan, he's been murdered. Seuss was inspired <laughs> by someone I went to college with. This guy, uh, Jesus Chambro. I'm great at fixing stuff, playing video games, having a sort of mustache. He was kind of a mystery, but he was always in the computer lab and he always wanted to help you. Handyman of the apocalypse, that's your server. <laughs> he would see you and just be like, hey dude, hey dude, you need help with the printer? He'd be like, no, I'm good. He'd be like, oh, I'm going to help you fix the printer. I should have thought of this years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I broke the hey, you want my help fixing the printer that I just broke? <laughs> <laughs> help, I'm trapped in the game. <laughs> <laughs> always causing and solving problems. Don't lose your cameras. Wait, lose the cameras? Don't! Dude, I just threw two away. But it always came from the most sincere place. Oh. My wisdom is both a blessing and a curse. Gideon. I love Gideon's Sue. I 100%. Mad. I'm yeah. rewatching this show. There was a lot own. of brainstorming about what he might be like, in particular, what his design was and what was going on with his hair. One of those infernal gummy koalas has gotten into my precious hair! We gave him big hair with the thought that maybe there would be a malformed second twin that Gideon hid with oh his my hair. God. Maybe Gideon had a twin as well. No! That's the hair! I don't think there is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Reality is an illusion. The universe is a hologram. Bye, Cole. Bye. He is a danger to our universe. 
His name must not be mentioned, Alex. Mr. Dorito. <laughs> when we came up with the idea of what I took, the triangle from the back of the dollar bill, dressed him up with the top hat and some stupid little arms and legs, and named him Bill after the dollar. After the dollar bill. Yeah. Okay. So he easy. was originally yeah. going to be green. One of our artists said, no, he looks kind of weird. He looks like a leaf. So we made him yellow. And now he looks like a nacho. <laughs> like a pyramid. In the episode Dreamscapers, we see that Mabel is wearing a sunset sweater. Yeah, that is ocean. meant to symbolize the descent from our storytelling from a brighter story to a darker story. Uh, huh. hmm. uh, I always thought that if I was to make a TV show, how great would it be if I made it full of all those crazy backwards messages and secret codes and puzzles that <laughs> if there was any kid out there as weird as me, they would actually find the thing they were looking for. Fans Evil are time devouring really baby. Oh my god. I, yeah. Um, I have learned that the hard way. And so season two. <gasps> UFO. Yes, yeah. Let's up the ante. Let's have a code. That's there it is. Oh, that yeah. one. Yeah. That was that the worst was so one. <laughs> Let's have a code yep. word yep. that is hidden. Probably just the janitor it's kissing that wax settler Damn it. again. That, that dinosaur. Need to erase that from my memory. <laughs> so be it. Probably the best hidden code we've ever had was in the episode The Love God. Oh my gosh, God. that was such a pain in the ass. Oh my God. Yeah. And the letters. This one really felt like a, a team so find. Out. I didn't mm -hmm. think anyone would ever be able to find him. Sure enough, 10 minutes after the episode aired, somebody had cracked it. It yep. only took me 15 seconds. The other thing we did this season that we didn't do in season one is the very end of the episode, yeah. there's a flash, and you see a single frame. Yeah, of we never really did too much of all those. And that was all leading up to the big reveal of Stan's twin uh, brother. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like. That's ball. cool. When he time travels, oftentimes he does it poorly and catches on fire. He has to <laughs> slap himself and say, like, oh, cut, cut down. He's burned off all his hair from botched time traveling. <laughs> I don't know if it's some kind of paradox. Nice. Or if I'm just hmm. really tired. We ended up writing a song from McGucket where he sings about the gobble walker and how it's real and how it's gonna get you. And then we learned two things. One, the song was too long. Two, McGucket's a terrible singer. That's probably why I live in the dump. <laughs> the tale of two stands, you see that Stan's science fair project that failed in high school was a football robot called Footbot. This is apparently a dream he has had for a very long time, and it's a very <laughs> dumb dream. One thing about the show that not a lot of people know is that some names of incidental characters or side characters that don't really matter in the show. Hey, I'm Gabe Benson, y'all. This is Lee and Nate. <laughs> The number of them are based on boys my sister had a crush on in <laughs> middle school and elementary school. Awesome comeback, Mabel. Don't treat me like a child, Tyler. She called me up and she's like, what is that guy's name doing in there? I was like, don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Uh, so please don't tell anybody. <laughs> the smile dip and she's on this crazy sugar trip. Would you like to eat my candy paws? And she's riding this dolphin and says, Onward, Dale. Now I go to Comic-Con and a hundred kids chant, Onward Zayoshima to me, having no idea that that's just the name of our director, Johnny Oshima. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's Another so funny, I love it. <laughs> on a big white gorilla, singing the drive-in song, headlights are out, can't really see where I'm going. That's just something I do. Like, if I'm looking for my keys, I'll just be like, where are my keys? I'm losing my mind, where'd they go? <laughs> do, 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 do. Walk into my car. <laughs> little cameos of mine in the show where my oh. face will show up. People assume Whoa. that that's like me, like, oh, ha, oh. get this, like a huh. little ego boost. The crew likes to make fun of me. <laughs> and whenever I didn't they realize put that. my face in the show, that's their way of doing it. Oh, that's funny. That's I so funny. Know. That's they cool. put him in. That's great. Wow. Oh, it's over. Right. Dang, Darn, I wanted, I wanted to keep going yeah, for another that hour. Great. I now, love there that. Is, there is more. Aiden didn't kind of edit stuff to time, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad he added Calvin in there. Uh. Oh, that caught me off guard. Mr. Yeah. Dorito! <laughs> so I did not funny. expect it either. <laughs> oh, well, I wasn't expecting Calvin to show up no. in the middle of that. Oh, yeah. God. That's funny. Uh, Hirsch, you know? This is cool. I, I, I love the little details. Even people like us can't catch them all, you know? But Sure. I love... <laughs> Alex was in there so much. I love... <laughs> he was. Yeah, I mean, that's fun. But I love the connections to things where it's like... See, I haven't watched again. And if I watched again knowing where things go, how many of those will I catch the second time? But the idea of like... Stan having the UFO thing yeah. and it's like, well, we know what happened with the UFO <laughs> now, you know? Yeah. You know, just little things like that where you're like, oh, the I love the prism idea. Yep. Just sl slightly alluding to the reflection in a flashback that you see. I 100% I know what he's talking so cool. about. Like when you're creating your own story, you want to be, it's like when Rick does a hint hunt. Like 
You want it to be difficult, but not so difficult that one person can't find it. But then 10 minutes later, someone's already cracked it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have made so many kids cry if I did this show. <laughs> in, in grown men. Well, have you guys checked out at all the uh, the journal number three? No. Because um, very lightly, um, I looked through it, I think, the day we finished a little yeah. bit. But I didn't yeah. like go through too much. And back before, I didn't want to get spoiled by accident. No, you know? no, no. Yeah, I, haven't, I didn't start reading it until we stopped... Uh, watching the show, and then I would, you know, read it every like five minutes every day, maybe in the bathroom. So this is my bathroom journal. Mm-hmm. But one thing he was talking about was Dipper's real name, and I found it in this journal. Yeah. Are you interested? Or you want to keep the mystery alive? You mean it's not Dipper? I think it's I not. Dipper's it. his nickname. Is Mabel a nickname? No, Mabel's his real name, and as he said, Mabel so and Dipper's his real names. Abel. Mabel and Fable. <laughs> I imagine it rhymes, but it might not because you have... Uh, we have what, Stanford and Stan Lee, which yeah, don't rhyme, but... That's true. So on this page here, it's called Maybe. The True Theory of Weirdness. Uh, we do get a little thing here that says, Mason? He blurted out. He seemed shocked by what he had come out of his mouth and then deliberately separated it. My real name is Mason. Dipper is just a nickname, but everyone got used to it, and now it feels too late to tell everyone the truth. It's kind of a dumb name anyway. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I like the don't tell anyone. Poor Masons yeah. in the world. So so Mason and Mabel. Mason and Mabel, the That twins. goes better with, like, Stanley Stanford yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mason, Mabel. Because I was trying to think of what it would be. That's why I yeah. went to Abel at first, cause, but the rhyming isn't necessarily what we're going for. So, But there's a lot of really cool little details in here, you know, just making the... The world seemed bigger, but still mysterious. Sure. And I feel like, you know, Gravity Falls as a whole has a lot of that. Where I'm like, well, we know that these animals came from some other dimension than whatever then, but yeah. what is that? And where yeah. where is it? And I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. And where did the gnomes come from? Even the things that we thought we knew about, like the unicorns, like, were not what we thought we knew, mm-hmm. right? Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, want, I want to rewatch it. I just mm-hmm. haven't. Um, maybe I will with the kids at some point. We'll just watch through some more because I want to know like things they caught that maybe I didn't. Yeah, sure. You know, it can like, be interesting. They don't. Whenever I opened up saying like, "Hey, have we finished all of Gravity Falls?" Like, "Oh, what'd you think of it?" And I kind of talked about it a little bit, but I didn't really get from them too much of like, "Oh, what'd you think about this or anything?" Yeah. So, I, I wonder if watching through with them again, if I like what their eyes saw, or did they dive into things and start looking stuff up as opposed to trying to solve puzzles? Hmm. I imagine right. they just watch through. But yeah. I didn't talk to him about it because I didn't want to know. Well, I didn't YouTube know there were video. puzzles in every episode, you know? Sure. <laughs> well, uh, like we said, or Rick said earlier, make sure you guys are getting your questions in because we will be jumping into questions and then just like a more, you know, structured di- uh, discussion later. But we still got some stuff to watch here, too. That's true. So it would seem. Let's check it out. All right. This next one's about a minute and a half. It is entitled The McGucket Hoax. What? Hoax. Halfway into the season, maybe, somebody had cracked the theory that Stan had a twin brother. And Alex had seen this and it was passing on, somebody's Tumblr was like, here's the big theory, I think that Stan has a twin brother. And Alex was like, oh no, we're gonna nip this in the bud. It was like, all hands on deck, it was a big red alert and everybody came out (laughs) of their offices. And he's like, okay, here's what we need to do. Um, We need to figure out a counter narrative and we have to get it out there and we're gonna leak it. We're gonna pretend like it was somebody who's just walking through the halls. Uh. And so he had Joe Pitt draw up uh, a picture of old man McGucket with six fingers on his hand. <laughs> so it with a cast on. And that was always kind of a question. It's like, where did he get the cast? What's that story? What, you know, yeah. how did he break his arm? Why is it always broken? So we, we just made a still of it, and then we put it on one of the editor's TVs in the editing bay. Put a fake time code stamp on it. <laughs> oh, my God. Kind of Amazing. Property of Disney TV. Of and then Alex created a fake Reddit account and threw it up on the Internet. And he, I think he let it sit there for maybe an hour or two or maybe a day, I don't know. Took it down and really buried it, but it got spread throughout the internet, and all of a sudden the internet now believes that they were like, okay, thank God. Now they believe it's McGucket. Okay, they're off the scent. Who puts <laughs> forth that kind of effort for this thing? But it actually. I feel I like mean, that's something that's we would do. Yeah. There's this whole ocean of, of people that were thirsty for that kind of stuff, <clears throat> and it, it was just another part of all these different fun things that Gravity Falls did for the fans. That's hilarious. That's I love super it. Super cool. Really reminds me of what Lucasfilm did uh, with Plu Koon. Sure. In the yeah. Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. Like to the point where they had someone do concept art. Yeah. 
That's hilarious. It, it's the, the fun thing about taking someone off the scent, and I feel like we've done stuff like that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like with messing, with, like hint hunts and stuff. Oh, We're like, yeah. you know what? Let's post this, and we have some post of something that's like toying with it. Like, is this a hint? Like, well, there is a hint, but we're also messing with you with this and this. Like, Aaron is doing his Twitch intro in front of the One Piece shelf. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what does this mean? Yeah. It's a really interesting part of storytelling that I think, like, us as viewers don't really talk about too much, which is you want to be able, especially in a mystery show, you want to be able to have a satisfying answer to your mystery. So you want to start adding little clues, and you want to ha- start building that so when it finally happens, it's not just from out of nowhere it feels like oh man this makes sense but when you do that people are going to come together they're going to work on it they're going to figure it out george r R. martin in game of thrones this happened to him fucking years before he even got the books out that he's got out so far not even talking about the books he hasn't gotten out and everybody's already figured out what he's wanting to do you know sure so it's a it's an interesting thing it's like i said similar to hint hunts in that you want someone to be able to enjoy it by themselves but if too many people start working on it, they're going to, quote, unquote, spoil the surprise. Yeah. So that is interesting. And if they can't, then it's not a good mystery. Then Yeah, of course. There's, there's like a balancing act of, you know, when he saw everybody started talking about the twins. And I have to admit, like, when did we start doing that? It was during the glasses episode, right? We thought it was a female twin. Yeah. Um, um, because of the shape of the glasses. I yeah. remember also thinking, like, maybe like an alternate reality version of Stan at some point. Like, what sure. if that's not Stan? It's a different Stan, which yeah. obviously is not twins. <laughs> but if I wanted to try to, like, poke and prod that theory, I could be like, yeah, like a twin. <laughs> but it was kind of an alternate reality. Yeah. In a way, well, he was in an alternate reality, yeah. but he's from <laughs> this one. So. Like, you know, we were able to experience that, and whenever that reveal happened, it wasn't the most shocking thing in the world, but because we were already so invested in the characters... It didn't matter. It didn't matter. You're sure. just you're, you're still satisfied. And we were shocked as to who was voicing him. <laughs> yes, we were. <laughs> yeah. I do remember, like, at one that. point, thinking about the twin idea, because yeah. I remember the, my, uh, my grandmother in her generation, she has twin sisters. Yeah. And I remember at one point my mom being like, well, it skips one, so she's like there's going to be a twin it's going to be your kids yeah or it should have been me or something like that yeah so i remember it, her talking about you. that it usually ran in stuff and there was a point where i'm like maybe it could be twins there are these these guys are twins yeah could, could they be twins you know but <clears throat> it was fun to speculate and toss out ideas and yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of the more fun shows is those mystery box type of things where you're trying to figure out what's going on and i feel like they usually slowly give you answers as opposed to it feeling I don't know, sometimes, sometimes some shows don't, I don't feel like I earned it. Or I feel like it's drug on too long Agreed. and I already know and mm. just move on with more. Yeah. And Gra- uh, Gravity Falls yeah. had a good way of having those mysteries and then kind of giving us a little bit and then, then opening more questions where yeah. I didn't feel unsatisfied. Yeah. I didn't feel at, like what you, I was were, getting. you were just being like jerked around. Yeah. Sure. Right? It was like, oh, I've figured this out like eight episodes ago. Just reveal it so that I can move past it. Yeah. <laughs> and Gravity Falls also doesn't overstay its no. visit. No. You know, it only being two seasons, I feel like the first season does a really good job at what it's wanting to do. It does. And introducing everything, getting you into Gravity Falls, and then slowly introducing a bigger mystery. And then season two really dives off the deep end into a bigger mystery yeah. chunk of everything. You yeah. know? I think it's great that it trusts kids to keep up. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. it's a mystery that can intrigue adults and kids as well sure like, well, yeah, i don't think kids are going to get lost that, much that's that a show. great point not only in like the mystery and what's happening but just the characters a lot of shows that are aimed primarily at kids characters need to be distilled down to one or two notes for them to be able to follow those characters and what they like what they dislike why they should care about them gravity falls doesn't have that all, all every character in the show has a lot of different notes to play on right like yeah. even Stan, who is the grumpy old man, you can't trust Stan. There's something there's something behind that that vending machine and we don't know about it for a while. Mm-hmm. But a kid watching that goes, Okay, I'm supposed to trust adults, but not that one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which sure. is really fun to play with yeah. and really fun to to recognize as an adult. And it makes a very emotional scene where Mabel, this such trusting person, uh, now has yeah. to question that yeah. it's in true. the basement with, with Stan. Mabel's one of my favorite characters in the show, not because, not just because how much I enjoy her, but because I personally feel like she is so close to being a character I can't stand. Mm-hmm. But 
whether it's the voice actress, the writing, the jokes, there's something about it that I just find like endlessly not annoying. <laughs> Does that make sense? A character like that, I feel like could, uh, me being a 33, 35 year old, year old man watching it, I might get annoyed by. Yeah, sure. But there's just something about like everything coming together perfectly for Mabel that She's I so only endearing. ever wanted to see more. Yeah. Another um, another thing here to watch. Did you have something else to say? No, I, I agree with yeah. the Mabel. Um, which Very I much. actually have already seen this. Oh, I haven't seen this one. Okay. I saw it on Twitter. Ooh, oh, I'm excited. So Ooh. it's um the uh, the main creator of the show and his messages with um the Disney censors. Oh, censors. okay. This is gonna Alex be Hirsch. great. Okay. The following are real emails from the Disney TV Standards and Practices Department. Monday, September 9th, 2011, page 31. Page 31. Please revise poop face as it comes across as a replacement for shit face. <laughs> Prior <laughs> use of Mabel saying poop, poop, and butts in the episode Fight Fighters came across as more childlike and not as offensive. I've never met a human on Earth of any age who would be offended by a cartoon saying the word poop face. Not changing it. This is him page replying back, okay. 492. It has come to our attention that hoo-ha is a slang term for vagina. <laughs> it has come to our attention. Hoo-ha! <laughs> 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 is a proper word meaning excitement or hullabaloo, and that is clearly oh, its meaning here. The context is an owl-themed restaurant called Hoo-ha's Jamboree. <laughs> vagina Jamboree. <laughs> <laughs> Please revise Chub Pup on T-shirt. Chub as a sexual connotation. This is silly. It's an image of a fat dog. <laughs> From the context, there's no reason to think chub means anything other than that. Chub we have up. ran this phrase up the line, and unfortunately, the concern surrounding it still remains. If you'd like to send me some alternate phrases, I can run those and let you oh, know what These guys are killing us creativity. Chubby pup. Tub pup. Chubbity pup pup. <laughs> can't believe I have to do this. <laughs> Please revise the action of Blubs putting his arm around Durlin. As noted in previous concerns, their affectionate relationship oh, should remain common. Oh, how about that? Huh. Nope. They're buddies. <laughs> <laughs> he really got that in the final episode, context, didn't he? As yeah. buddies, it's okay. Please replace G as the term is considered an abbreviation of Jesus. Age 26. Please revise Holy Christmas as it can be perceived as religiously offensive. Age 6. Please revise Zeus's so line much. about dressing as a giant teddy bear. It may call to mind the people who dress up as stuffed animals as a furry <laughs> fetish. Do I even have to respond to this? Page 11. Please revise <laughs> Wendy's response Aw crud dang as crud has an inappropriate slang crud. definition. Uh, what? How is this my life? Page 16. S&P is not okay with saying the word Lucifer. Please revise. S&P. So see no reason to change Standards this. and practices. Mm. Please revise. S&P is concerned we will get complaints about such mentions of Lucifer, Satan, and or devil. <clears throat> so what if we get a complaint? The current line, scrimshod from the tusks of Lucifer himself, is the kind of stuffy, non-political, old-timey purple prose like you'd see in Moby Dick. It's a hundred percent less offensive to any religion than the Mr. Toad's wild ride hell scene in Disney. <laughs> <laughs> usage yeah. is patently defensible, and you could respond to a complaint like this. Sir or madam, we respect your religion, but this fanciful public domain language is used in a spooky, Halloween-like context and in no way represents a commentary on any belief system whatsoever. <laughs> right. Please eat this went off. cookie and enjoy this cute, classic, family-friendly Disney cartoon. <laughs> Why should we be held hostage to any imaginary knee-jerk career complainer who could conceivably go out of their way to pretend to be offended by this? We'll review. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so good. The gag with the basketball player throwing the pet <clears throat> chimp through the basketball hoop will most likely be problematic. We would need to run the scene by our Disney animal consultant for what? acceptability. It's a cartoon. Especially with any primate inclusions. Also, the monkey's name, Salacious Monk Monk, <laughs> is also problematic for SP, <laughs> as the <laughs> salacious term is inappropriate. <clears throat> Please revise. Uh, this is maybe the dumbest collection of notes I've ever received. Oh, I love it. Seriously, reread this entire paragraph out loud. Please revise <laughs> the text on Tambri's flyer. Bottles will be spun. This implies they are playing spin the ball. <laughs> we don't want to send the wrong message to our audience. Really? The message is, teenagers like kissing. How on earth is that the wrong message? And it's on a flyer. We don't even show it. You gotta be kidding me here. <laughs> S and P is still uncomfortable with this flyer giving the impression that it is a 
makeout party. <clears throat> What's a makeout party and where can I find it? Fine. <laughs> we'll remove the line, bottles will be spun. Please replace with new line, not SP approved. Not yeah. SP. Please omit. Let's see what the problem with this is. <laughs> Uh, Not S and P approved has been approved. <laughs> oh my God! Is it? In it? Oh my God! <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, Not S and P. I Standard love that. That's practices. how he approached all of those situations so yeah. much. I would love just a book or a series of just that from creative people to. Let's face it, not creative people. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Controlling people. It. It's the market side of things, being yeah. worried about what the outcome is going to be versus the people creating the content and stuff. Yeah. And I love how it's like you're taking this one thing and taking it out of context, yeah. whereas when you put it into the context of what's going on, how are you getting mm -hmm. that? Yeah. You yeah. know? You have to take it out of context in order to, to feel like it's offensive in any way. Yeah. I will say I have a – I feel like I have a pretty dirty mind. Oh, yeah. And I think you Gravity Falls is one of the one of the shows that I have had the fewest like moments of – Oh, agree. Even, even with all the whatever yeah. things that they do, sure. Yeah. Like anime, Animaniacs takes it way further. Sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I want yes, you to finger prints. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know that whole thing? Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, one of the things I think I'm proudest about being like in the YouTube creator space is that <clears throat> YouTube can, you know, to a certain extent, you don't have that type of thing where like you can just do what you want. You're the creator. You're the controller. And as long as you're not doing a thing too inflammatory you can generally just do what you want and it doesn't matter sure you know so i'm sure that was extremely frustrating for him to deal with on a day-by-day -day basis but the fact that he put not s and p improved in the flyer is so funny <laughs> i have to find a picture i want to go back something. and see they said it wasn't really shown though was right? it not? he said it was like, it's on the flyer not even shown or something yeah huh. um yeah like people kissing is not shown it, yeah, it is but what the flyer meant, show. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we saw that one time. I think it was like all Not the papers and stuff approved. on the on the living oh, yeah. floor you in front of the TV. If you if you Google it, Jake, it the uh, it's the first thing that shows up. It's in the Halloween episode. It says not S and P approved and not no photos better end up online. <laughs> what it says. <laughs> it's in the Summerween episode. Standard but, yeah. Yeah. practices. There's That's a lot really of cool. funny story from. Wrestling days. Oh, I'm now, sure wrestling has standard crazy. Yeah. As well. <laughs> I love sure. it. <clears throat> and, and if you don't know, like I even was like, wait, what's S and P? And you said standards and practices. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get you. Like if I was just looking at this on this flyer, I'm like, not S and P approved. What's that mean? Yeah. What's S and P? You know. So, Something in parents. I don't know. Yeah. That's really funny too. So I love that, and I'm sure. Yeah, you're right, Eric. I'm sure there's so many situations of that. We talked about that in um, in another show. It was uh, Barry, where yeah. we wondered if some of the stuff they were doing was poking fun at just the idea of making shows yeah. and what people go through and the hassles of, yeah. okay, it's it's going, nope, we're canceling it, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I think it would be so fun to just see some of those situations because I guarantee those are based on real-life situations. Yeah. And Barry does it in such a funny way. Yeah, you know? I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, like, the one that – upsets me the most is like the cops relationship yep like that one is just a, a bummer yeah oh here it is right here for people to see not s p approved it was was in the show it's amazing i love uh ultimaniac who says not chaperone and parents approved but it's yeah. chaperone s-h-a-p yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great but no rick uh we had a very similar thing in uh one of the shows that we were watching from nickelodeon where it was very obvious that the creators wanted to go further with a relationship like that, and the studio was said no. Yeah. So, if anything, that's like one of the few things that I can point at to say this did not come out in the last two years. Sure. <laughs> I love that. In the, in that one, there is like no, they're buddies. Dot dot dot. They're like, <laughs> we are okay with this decision then. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, we're okay in this context. Yeah. yeah. But if the context is different, they're like, nah, we can't do that one. So. But, you know, Alex had to do what uh, what a lot of creators back then had to do and just go all in in the, in the last time you see them where they kind of embrace each other and talk about love, right? Yeah. yeah. You can't cancel me. You can't cancel finale. me now. It's too late now. It's yeah. the last one. We in. Yeah. No, that was, uh, that was a really cool segment. Again, if anybody has like stuff like that for other things that we love, I would love to to check out just what I don't have to deal with, which is a dumb boss with a dumb decision. 
<laughs> yeah, we're the dumb boss. Yeah, we're the dumb bosses. We get to and make all the, the dumb decisions. decisions are on us. Yeah, we have to deal with our past selves. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's true. We got to deal with like community guideline strikes. Ask Calvin. <laughs> we won't dumb. have one. We're good. <laughs> Um, also, if you guys have any uh, questions, as Rick mentioned earlier, you can submit them with channel points down below the chat. So mm-hmm. yeah. we'll get into those here in a little bit. All right, we have another one here. This one's 22 and a half minutes long. This one's a long one. Ooh. I'm interested to see what this is. Yeah. All right. Are we good? This one's 22, guys. Let's see what we're getting into. Drop in. Blame it on Jorge. Yeah. The treasure hunt really began during the finale of Gravity Falls. Mm. At the very end of part three, oh, okay. past the credits, a very quick shot of a statue of Bill Cipher can be seen. Out of all these hidden messages, the only one really having to do with the Cipher hunts is this cryptic string of letters written on the bus seats. We saw that. Mm, we talked this about that. Yeah, we did. Okay. Using a Vigineer Cipher. What the key ended up mm, being Vigineer. and what the code was can be combined together. Uh, Vigineer is the one that the we have to find The final message ended up being Hidden deep within the woods, a buried treasure waits. Secrets lost and statues found beyond the rusty gates. What? Fans knew that something was about to go <laughs> underway. Okay. But no one knew just how big this game would end up being. He did a real life one. Alex posted a real second tweet hunt. that was even more wow. enticing than the he first. He made a hashtag. The tweet said, let the games begin. Hashtag. Do we need to F-L-S-K-H-U-K-X-Q-W. pause and try to crack this? H-U-K-X-Q-W. <laughs> that would just be the rest of the podcast. Along with an image. <laughs> This image is filled with secret codes. Um, but what stands yes. out the most is the illustration of a Bill Cipher statue in, in the, the woods. woods. Yeah. yeah. There's no doubt about it at this point. A Bill Cipher statue is somewhere out there. What? The majority of these codes can be solved by using a common cipher known as the Caesar cipher. Mm-hmm. Taking the hashtag uh. FLSKHUKXQW so far, I think we could have solved this. and shifting yeah. the whole thing back three letters hashtag gives us Cipher Hunt. Cipher Hunt. Cipher hunt. Like the text hunt. in the center of the image can also be solved by shifting it back three letters. It reads, The urban legend has come true. Cypher statues calling you. Oh, they didn't. The in secret the map rhyming. is in your hand to trace the clues across the land. Across the land. Are you? Finally, by also shifting the bottom text three letters back, it can be translated to, Don't forget it's all for pleasure. The hunt itself's the real treasure. But a prize awaits the first one there. Russia. Be safe. Be smart, Damn it, and of course, beware. But the red letters. That's what I was gonna say. It says Russia. Yeah, the it's in Russia. Of the secret messages were the numbers above the Bill Cipher statue. It reads eight, fifteen. I see that. Ten, <laughs> nineteen, five. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. It's <sighs> after clearer the in the message. <laughs> it turned out that this secret message can be decoded by viewers. using three ciphers. Ah, oh, uh, all three. The first Rick. being okay. an A one Z two six cipher. Eight becomes H. Since H is the eighth letter in the alphabet, 15 becomes O, since O is the 15th letter in the alphabet, and so on. The second cipher used Harsh. is the at bash cipher. Applying the cipher to, to our do code this gives us the real show. SLQHV. Lastly, we use the good old Caesar <clears throat> cipher. Shifting all the letters back by three gives us Pines. Mm. Although none of these coded messages gave direct clues as to where the Bill Cipher statue was, mm-hmm. fans were quick to notice that some of the letters within these messages red. were highlighted red. After being translated, these letters spell Russia. Out Russia. They were, they were just in li- <gasps> we mean translated. Furthermore, they were in a line. Russian fans yeah. were able to recognize <laughs> the diagram at the middle left of the image as the Kazan Cathedral, ah. located in Saint Petersburg, Russia. Oh, going to so Russia, boys. fans visited the cathedral in search of any clues. <laughs> Let's go. We should go. Eventually, Let's stop the video. Let's go to Russia. made by Twitter user Mind of Attic. After visiting the cathedral, this image was found. What? They by hid this in Russia? Through the Caesar cipher, it could be translated <clears throat> to, Finally, the hunt can begin. Begin? So switch your rubbles out for yen. What? Turn left when you're at the shrine's door. When you reach the statue, turn left once more. In the leftmost corner in the back is the info that you lack. A sword and a crescent mark the clue. Cypher statues call you. Dude, you can do national treasure? Yeah. What? This is so great. Rubble is the name of the currency used in Russia. Uh-huh. And then and yen. yen is the currency used in Japan. Uh-huh. Therefore, Jancy, the change the schedule up for me, please. Somewhere in Japan. <laughs> However, given that no we got to go to Russia, Russia then Japan, the move back. location was a mystery. Japan's kind of a big place after all. <laughs> yeah. The tournament hunters were eventually able to figure out the location of the next clue by searching through Alex Hirsch's Twitter account. 
Back in February, Ow. right before the airing of the finale, Alex Hirsch and his girlfriend posted a photo of themselves visiting a shrine in Japan. Wow. Where you're supposed what? to specifically pray for a cartoon-related luck. Hirsch left behind a Gravity Falls-themed Emma, which is a small wooden Love plaque that are typically left behind <laughs> at shrines. Fans saw this as a hint that the next location was at the Kanda Myojin Shrine, okay. the same one that Alex and his girlfriend visited. Twitter user Neon Kun one was able to locate the second clue on the back of one of the Emmas, wow. accompanied by a sword and a crescent. Mm. By translating the <gasps> message using so the cool. Caesar cipher, it reads, Consider in your quest for truth the hunter of the Fountain of Youth. 400 before his name is written, outside the gate is where it's hidden. Find what's lost to pass the test. From a shrine that's east to a shrine that's west. Hmm. Let's start with the Fountain of Youth. This mystical relic was believed to restore a person's Let's youth start with the fountain by simply youth. <laughs> bathing in the fountain's waters. The clue makes mention of the hunter of the Fountain of Youth. The most well-known person that fits this description is Juan Ponce de Leon, a Spanish explorer from the 1400s. He was said to have been searching for this fountain in order to cure his aging. Instead, he discovered Florida. <laughs> if we follow the next line in the second clue, and that's where everyone, everyone goes now when they get old, <laughs> we get 400 Ponce de Leon, which is an actual address in Atlanta, oh. Georgia. What? Guys, we found in it. Atlanta, there's Georgia. Poster, there's a lost poster for Waddles, but it's extremely it's wet, super, out. super faded. Upon reaching this address, which was a Shriner's Temple, a missing or a Shriner's lost Temple, poster like the Fez? for Waddles the pig was found. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Lost. the poster was water damaged, Got a but it contained scan a photo of Waddles, a secret message, oink, and a oink, phone oink, number oink, to call oink, if Waddles number. is found. A man whose first name is his last, <laughs> a statue honoring uh. his past, right behind him, by the sign of his park, <laughs> a golden head shows light in the dark. I don't know what that means. Glad I don't have to go out there and figure this out. Wonder what's on TV. <laughs> it involves a man with the same first and last name, a statue that honors him, and the location being somewhere near a park. Eventually, fans were able to narrow this to the Griffith J. Griffith statue oh. at Griffith Park in Los Angeles. A fan known as Ramble Wheels was able to travel to this location and find a golden head of wow. Uncle Stan. The head came with a piece of paper as well as a UV light. By flashing the light onto the piece of paper, <laughs> ah. a string of letters can be uncovered, which when put through the Caesar cipher displayed this message. 50 plus 50, that's the city. 100. From one angle, it's quite pretty. You'll find a bow tie and one eye. At his head is a rectangle, stones by stairs atop the top right angle. The stone with the UV swirl can glow. Find a black pouch that's below. 50 50, that's the city. Since 50 plus 50 <clears throat> equals 100, mm -hmm. players deduce that the next clue was nearby in Century oh. City, Los Angeles. Clever. One okay. of the city's parks was even trimmed to look like the Eye of Providence. <laughs> Amazingly, the voice actor for Dipper, Jason Ritter, and Alex Hirsch's own sister, Ariel Hirsch, joined in on the treasure Ariel. hunt. Oh, the what? duo, along with a group of fans, ventured to Century City in search for the fifth clue. Dude, Dipper got involved? That's okay, so cool. Right the top hey. right angle. And what if some kid came along and just took that stone? And just found it. That's yeah. a cool stone. I'm taking this. It is a USB. This is. I love this. They have in 2016. Yeah. USB. Eventually, a black pouch was found, which contained a USB stick with a drawing of Bill Cipher on it. When read. It contained this message. All right, kids. Mario. The next Mario, clue yes. is a, a kind of tricky one. You see, this is one that can only be found by someone who is currently in the building it is hidden in. That's right. I'm looking for students at the California State Summer School of the Arts. Okay. Only CESA students can find this clue. I don't want anybody else going to CESA. All right? <laughs> it's, it's, you're not allowed in. Only students there are allowed in. Students, scour the sub-level. You'll know it when you see it. Oddly enough, Super Mario World music and sound effects can be heard. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Grunkle oh, that has no relation? I guess not. What? It's a Weird. red herring, Aaron. State Summer School of the Arts. However, the clue is inside the campus, meaning only students who are currently attending the school can find it. 
Twitter user How DJ Russell Red <gasps> was the first to uncover a string of letters, numbers, and symbols that were graffitied onto a campus wall, along with a crudely drawn bill cipher. After some speculation, fans deduced that this was meant to be coordinates, as the N oh. and the W could mean Thank God no one and West. Graf graffitied over it. However, there are notably letters in between some of the numbers, and converting them by using the A1Z26 cipher led to the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. Okay. Bill that Cipher. That seemed unlikely. Huh. At least, I hope so. <laughs> Nevertheless, it was soon discovered that this code could be cracked using a hexadecimal to decimal cipher. Hmm. 37, 49, 19 North, and 122, 13, 59 West, which points to Piedmont, California, Alex Hirsch's hometown. Mm. After I, receiving I love that it pointed to the Bermuda Triangle, himself, though. That's yeah. perfect, yeah. forward and search for the seventh clue. What was found was a treasure chest, a key, and a cryptex, which can only be opened by entering the correct Just five letters. Going. Pines! Pines! pines, pines, pines. Ooh, that's a good one. That was on the page. Eventually, by entering in pines, a letter can be found. L.A. has the clue you want. 1824 one, North Vermont. 2718 the box. Please don't be puzzled. Use the key. So somebody has to bring this key to L.A. Yeah. What? All right. Someone has to take to LA. this key to right L.A. To fans back to Los Angeles, <clears throat> specifically 1825. This North makes people have to work together. Avenue. This is all over yeah, the world. All over Rick the world. Office. Hint hunt, man. The number Dude, is two, it can scale seven, so much bigger one, now. Two, I can yeah. see yeah. the light know. in Rick's was eyes the P.O. Box growing. That hit the next clue. <laughs> oh, P.O. Tons box. of fans showed up in heavy anticipation and uncovered what was probably the biggest roadblock in the search so far. Roadblock. What is it? It's a code. Uh, okay. yeah, no. It's a puzzle. Oh my god. Oh my god. A puzzle. It's a puzzle. I guess you are going to that pie place. Pie this place. This puzzle set contained two thousand pieces, and it also included an envelope with a drawing of Bill Cipher, some stand bucks, and decoy junk mail. Some stand bucks. Unlike some of the other puzzles that could be solved and decoded with the help of the internet. Mm -hmm. This jigsaw puzzle must be completed in person. That looks hard. Yeah. Furthermore, a ton of the puzzle pieces, How many pieces? were yellow, <laughs> which made it even more difficult. Dedicated fans spent days trying to solve the puzzle, <laughs> switching places <laughs> with each other in order to sleep, while some didn't sleep at all. Where they do it, like in a library? One fan was able it looks to like? guess the location of the next clue <clears throat> by assuming what the final message would be when it was only partially finished. Really? The fan was able to correctly guess that the ninth clue was in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. However, where in all of Portland, Oregon remained a mystery. What does all of Portland, Oregon? A different fan who was keeping up with the cipher hunt online stumbled across the ninth clue by complete accident. Oh. It was a garden gnome what? with a view master and a message beneath it. The message read, <laughs> To the redwoods you must race. If you're confused, you're in the right place. The gift shop is not too far. The password will buy the iPhone. Kind of mad gone. they skipped a step. It was soon deduced that the slides were actually depicting the area feeling. around Confusion Hill, a roadside attraction that served as the inspiration for the mystery shack from the oh, show. Whoa. Yeah. Really? It was evident by the message capitalizing the C in Confused, as well as mentioning a gift shop. Yeah. At Confusion Hill, a jar of fake eyeballs was uncovered, <gasps> as well as what? the 10th clue written on the bottom of it. It reads Where has my grunkle gone? To Stanley Street in Oregon. A telephone pole is where he's at. Why do you have to bolt like that? Bolt. This one was pretty straightforward, as it directly stated where players needed to go for the 11th clue. Stanley Street in Amity, Oregon. A geocache bowl was found, which, when unscrewed, revealed a message. Hmm. Rod Roger Tofty knows the place behind a sign buried at the base. Near Pa's laundry on the hill, here lie the bones of a man named Bill. Bill. Oh, oh, they're so excited. I'm so happy for this group right? of people. <laughs> After a quick Google search, Roger Tofty was revealed to be the creator of the Enchanted Forest, an amusement park in Turner, the, Oregon. Is that the, huh. the pup Imagine how place? exciting it must have been to live in <laughs> California or Oregon at the time. Anyways, the hunt was reaching its finale, as evident by the clue found at the Enchanted Forest. It was a ripped up piece of paper with an encoded message written on it. After it was Caesar ciphered, the text on the paper translated to Return to where it all began. The final piece is in your hand. The parchment can be such a tease, 
the answers written in the trees. Written in the trees. Where it all began. When where I first read Return to Where It All Began, Russia? I thought Alex Hirsch was actually expecting players to go back to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> but no. It turns out that a dotted line and a red X can be found on the back of the paper. Mm. As if it were a treasure map. Oh, and that's... By attaching it to the top of the initial image tweeted okay. by Alex. Trees. The one that kickstarted the whole thing. A map can be created. Players use this map to look for the statue in various locations, but with no luck. Okay. Mm. Others began examining the trees seen behind the Bill Cipher statue. It's in the but trees. Again, no luck. Mm. It wasn't until a week later when Alex Hirsch decided to tweet out a small clue to help further the and search. Gotta give it a little hint. Him. Alex tweeted, An urban legend arcade game gives the method's correct name. Mathematically, the letters hide in branches and knots, no matter the side. Let's break this down. Huh. Okay. When you think of urban legend and arcade game, oh, what comes to mind? Which game? Well, most will probably of, yeah. think of Polybius. Uh, Polybius. An right? 80s arcade game said to cause all sorts of nasty effects to those who like played it. Put people oh. into trances. Oh. Yeah. Fans were able to okay. conclude that the Polybius Square would be the huh. cipher used to solve the final riddle. Yep. That is a cipher. The Polybius Square is a 5x5 five five grid, with each space containing one letter. By numbering each row and column, you can give each letter its own unique number code. We know that the branches and knots play a key role in solving this mystery, as Alex's tweet implies. There are 18 branches and 4 knots in this image. Mm -hmm. Assuming each branch and knot make up one number in the Polybius Square, that gives us 22 numbers to work with. This is done by simply adding the number of branches and knots there are. However, a Polybius square is decoded using a pair of numbers yeah. for the row and column. Knowing this, we can divide the 22 numbers into pairs and safely assume that there are 11 letters in total. Now the problem is finding out what the numbers were. The Reddit user realized that some of these branches have a leaf attached to them. Sure. Knowing the that the Polybius square can only use the numbers 1 through 5, he reasoned that those five variables must be branches that point upwards with a leaf, branches that point upwards without a leaf, branches that point downwards without a leaf, branches that point downwards with a leaf, mm. and the knots. These five variables stood <laughs> for the five the numbers. <laughs> Jeez. By ordering them from top to bottom, tree to tree, we get this code. Okay. Looks good, and we're narrowing our possibilities, but now what? Yeah, I don't know Something where Something that we stands are. out is that several of these pairs actually repeat. Mm -hmm. The second and third letter, the first, eighth, and eleventh letter, and the seventh and tenth letter. Now, here is where we play the big guessing game. If we assume that this is a city in Oregon, where Gravity Falls takes place, mm, then we are left with an eleven-letter word with some repeating letters. It's likely that the second and third letter is a vowel like E-E -E or O-O. -O. Mm -hmm. I think we can safely rule out A-A, I-I, and probably U-U, yeah. since those vowels aren't commonly repeated in words. Now, there are 241 cities in Oregon. <laughs> what has However, double the only ones that have an E-E -E or an O-O -O after the first letter are Coos Bay, Hood River, Wood Village. Reed Sports, Woodburn, and Wood Village. Well, what has 11 letters? You might think that it's Wood Village yeah. because it perfectly fits the number of letters there are. Ah, uh, damn. However, it got me. that city also has another pair of repeating letters, mm -hmm. LL. Uh, yeah. The corresponding codes don't match up, and therefore, it can't be the exact translation. Whatever this code translates to must have the same second and third letter, the same first, eighth, and eleventh letter, and the same seventh and tenth letter. Knowing this, the only city from our small selection that fits is Reed Sports. The second and third letters are both E, and the first and eighth letters are both R. Yeah. Following this pattern, yeah, no the eleventh letter must also be R. And Reed since Sport, the seventh Oregon, letter right? Oregon. Sport is O, or Oregon. that yeah. means the tenth letter is also O. I'm much more Oregon. O R meaning Big old Oregon. Dummy. Reed Sport. I mean, I'd still be in Russia. Oh, there it is! <laughs> there it is! Oh my God! They found it! There he is! Wow. Oh my gosh! Someone was streaming. Oh my God. Or recording it. Cypher, Cypher Hunt, Hunt streams. streams. Wow. On August 2nd, 2016, Twitter user Shadow underscore Wolfwind became the first to discover the Bill Cypher statue Congrats. and was awarded by becoming the mayor of Gravity Falls. Wow. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's how it works. I can't believe I found She's it. She's been chosen by the oh Eagles. Oh my god, I never... Oh, I'm freaking out. I don't want to... Oh, he's all broken and stuff. Oh. 
His heart's broken. Sometime later, a treasure chest buried in front of the statue was discovered by a different group of fans. Okay. This treasure chest contained plastic coins and gems, Russian and Japanese currency, a copy of Gravity Falls Journal 3, uh, a cool. black light, nice. a music box with Bill's Eye that plays the Gravity Falls theme song, a piece of paper, a mini Bill Cipher statue, a frame sketch of the main characters Aww, posing with the statue, that's cool. a USB drive, a plastic crown, and a sash that says Mayor of Gravity Falls, <laughs> which was given to the first winner. Good. The drawing inside they Journal gave 3 are of Seuss, Old Man McGucket, and Grunkle Stan, with Stan saying, Enjoy the nerd book, Smarty Pants. And below it says, From Grunkle Stan, Seuss, and McGucket, Alex Hirsch. However, by using the black light, Bill's name is also alongside the signatures. Bill. He also Stay appears paranoid, saying, Stay it. paranoid. <laughs> when the piece of paper is put under the black light, it reads, Congratulations on finding the Bill's cipher statue, Bill's final resting place. Whosoever finds this treasure is hereby the new Mayor of Gravity <laughs> Falls. So use your title well. Chances are you didn't do this alone, so share the wealth. You are an amazing fan. Your pal, Alex Hirsch. It's <sighs> That's fucking cool, man. So cool. So fucking cool. When the framed cool. image of the main characters is placed under the black light, their eyes begin to glow, mm. including Bill's. Mm -hmm. His bow tie and eyelashes appear, and the phrase, trust no one, can be seen Whoa, above congratulations. Yeah. Finally, there's, of course, the <clears throat> USB drive. Yes. We'll meet again. <laughs> Don't know where. Don't know when. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. <coughs> oh, my esophagus. <laughs> Hey guys, congratulations on finding my uh, the mysterious treasure of the, the statue in the forest. Um, this is it. This is, you reached the end. You really did it. You really, you looked for it and you found it. <laughs> and, um, now it's yours. Uh, you know, if you were hoping for some kind of like, you know, like a cash prize, <laughs> you know, I can't blame you, but the real, the real treasure is the journey and the friends. You made along the way, in case you don't have any friends, <laughs> which, you know, at least you got some exercise. Um, anyway, you know, take a picture with the statue. And get, shake his hand, that's kind of like a prize. And uh, tell everybody how you you did it first. And that makes you the best. Also, you know, if other people helped you, give them some of the gold plastic coins. Share the wealth. Anyway, congratulations. I'm Grunkle Stan, and as I always say... No refunds. <laughs> <sighs> That's it. Oh Great. man. Aiden in chat says the statue was moved to its current and permanent spot later, where people can see it now if they want. Amazing. That's really cool. Shit, maybe more emotional national tre national treasure did. That was great. I yeah. loved that the second group gave the sash to the girl that found it first. Sure. Because she didn't find the treasure, right? She just found no, the statue. Sure. Yeah. That's but, awesome. I will say, whenever they gave her that, I was like, well. That's awesome for her, but it sucks for all the people that did a lot of the other work, yeah. and then she yeah. was the one who found it too. Because, like he said, it was a group effort. It's How many people effort. put together that puzzle? Sure. You know, that's really cool though. Yeah, well, I love the I idea because flew to St. Petersburg <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and but you know, like, having it be so spread out like that forces people. Yeah. To, not one person can do all that. Yeah. You know, or yeah. most likely they're not going to do all that. And not for nothing, but all the ciphers and codes that we did that we love so much didn't really add much. In terms of like the actual sure. solution, it yeah. was the pleasure of getting to that solution that sure. was the real fun. Well, a right? lot of them were just like jokes about the episode. Yeah, but some yeah. of them like nodded towards a greater mystery and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah. what does that mean? Wait, don't trust Dan, you know, or whatever the case may be. He's like, I don't know. Then that's almost cooler than the show. What he just, what he did. No, yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. He he made a hint on. He made a hint uh -huh. <laughs> all over the world for people that. You know, I know the guy. You know, we've seen his struggles with standards and practices, and I don't know if his plan was two seasons always, what? or if he wanted to do more. But do we know how long it took, Chad? For what? That? For yeah, for from like when that? people found the first to, uh, like they said, it took a few days for the puzzle itself. So like, I wonder how long the entire process took. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Imagine just the fever pitch of fandom, like when the first one was discovered. 
and you know there's like a reddit community or a discord where they're all just working yeah that would be like that's like twitch plays pokemon like once in a lifetime feel you know let me say in chat this, that it took about three weeks this wow. here says after just two weeks uh gravity falls fans complete incredible global cipher hunt wow Sweet. and about two days of that was the puzzle sure the hmm? physical jigsaw puzzle the actual yeah yeah Honestly, piece the puzzle. coolest thing to me is that he did it after the show so it's not even like all right well you know we'll get a budget with some you know viral marketing stuff going on yeah that's just him yeah so cool and because he is the the char- the voices that we love you know he can do that message in that song <laughs> say no <laughs> refunds <laughs> which is such a stand thing to say yeah, on Alex Hirsch's Twitter, he has one that says, Day 13, Cypher Hunt is complete. Uh, Our nice. brilliant fans cracked a cypher and discovered the map led to Reedsport, Oregon. Yeah. So. But yeah, if that sort of thing seems fun to you, uh, join our Discord. Yes. Yeah, occasionally, those things happen. You, you know, have I've, to travel I've, through the internet, not I in used, real life. Yeah, I used yeah. to think that we went too far, but this shows that we don't go far <laughs> enough. We could really go far farther, enough, is what it, it shows us. Yeah. We, can we need to like, get like a small secret council oh, that we can have them place things in countries that we're not in. Yeah. <laughs> we have mods all over the, we we do. the planet. We, can you place this in LA? Can yeah. you place this in... You know, England. Can you place this in Everest? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gotta look up grave digging laws now. Grave digging laws. No, not grave digging. Rick. We're not doing that again. Uh, <laughs> not know. again. They got too close that one time. Yeah. How to oh, deal man. with animal bites? We gotta look up a lot of stuff. Someone said I can hide stuff for you in Germany. Yeah, yeah. We might, do that <laughs> might have to have a global hint hunt. Might for be like, fun. Man, that show's gotta be good. <laughs> Whatever show we're revealing, because we yeah. do a global hint hunt, and they're if like, there's only what? five fans. This? For fringe, <laughs> yeah. There's so people, there's people popping up now, being like, perfect. "I got England, I got Russia, I got." They're just like, <laughs> guys, go to our it. Discord. We'll uh, we'll set something up, and Rick will make one of the world's greatest hand hunts. Oh man! Here, print this out. Hide it here. Yep. Print this out. Hide it here. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be interesting. I'm curious to see. I'd be curious to see like how many fans of different countries we have that would go as far as to help solve a hint hunt. Sure. Yeah. That would you know? actually leave their houses, yeah, which is I'm a terrible thing to ask house. someone to do. No, it would be Rick, amazing. it's not terrible to leave your house. You, you know what would be you really see fun? the world, Rick. You see the world. What would be really fun would be, like, worldwide filming locations, the stuff that we've reacted or loved. Like, mm. you know, New Zealand, if you go to where Viggo Mortensen broke his toe, <laughs> you might get something. <laughs> he broke his toe. It would toe. be so hard to find that exact location, though. Go to the golf hole yeah. for Lost. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I know exactly where that is. <laughs> I really appreciate though how much Alex Hirsch like what what he enjoyed the, yeah. the show he created how much he like absolutely like it's that that article there was like he wanted to reward the fans who were celebrating the end of the show and enjoyed it so much here's a fun scavenger hunt yeah he gave his fans it, you know an unforgettable experience yeah right? I love that yeah like it's just really cool to have do you and, think he had to turn in the solutions to his codes to standards and practices mm-hmm. too. I mean, Imagine. in theory, you probably need to know uh, what they mean, right? Oh, yeah. you mean like in the show itself? In the show itself. Oh, yeah. Like you don't want it to turn in. Like what happens if you do that and it says Chub Pup? And they're like, oh, you got to change this code. Chub Pup. You know? That's a problem. All right, Bull Pup. <laughs> Fuck Disney S&P. <laughs> what if it says something like that? So, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. So awesome. With With the show and everything, like, did you guys end up with like a favorite character? Or is it too hard to choose like what? What you guys enjoyed? Do you want to get wise. into our questions? That's one of the questions. Is that one of the? There's questions? actually there's one. The Reliance here says as a reward for the puzzle group because they did kind of skip finishing the puzzle. They said as a reward for the puzzle group since someone solved it before they finished. Alex released the original unaired pilot of the show. Oh, oh really? That's really cool. I'm wow. gonna have to go check that out some point. Yeah, I think I watched that's that cool. one then because we watched the normal pilot, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as favorite characters go. Yeah, I didn't know. Like, we didn't really talk about any of our personal thoughts of. I mean, like diving deep into the show or anything. I, really I didn't know that's something we want to talk about. Or with what Eric was saying before about Mabel, mm-hmm. like it was always a consistent highlight for me in a character that I feel like could have been so easy. Yeah. Not to get wrong, but just I w- might not have enjoyed nearly as much. Like, I think it's easy to enjoy a character like Seuss, or it's easy to enjoy mm-hmm. a character like Stan, but it's hard to make a character like Mabel feel re- both relatable and eccentric. Yeah, sure. but also 
Like, you know, I'm a 35-year-old man. She was a 12-year-old girl, mm-hmm. and she's my favorite. So Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think Seuss, too, though, I think it's – I think you can have too much of him yeah. or – like you could you could have him in a way where it's sometimes too much. He's better as a spice than he is as like a like a main course. Typically, I'd say so. But I loved episodes that had him oh, no, of focused heavily yeah. on. Yeah. Sometimes you know yeah. he oh, was definitely. just it was just something about him and his like yeah. he had that nice person charisma. Like I love how he talked about the guy he based it on. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, hey dude, you need your printer fixed? Yeah. Oh, I broke your printer. Can I help you fix it? You know, like <laughs> yeah. uh, that sounds so suits like you know. Yeah. And I, it, it, I guess it, maybe it makes it more fun that a lot of his stuff was based on just his childhood, his real mm-hmm. friends, his real you know acquaintances, whatever yeah, boyfriends definitely. his his sister had and stuff. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> yeah. I like that too. It's just funny to see that pulled from, I guess, r- like the real world, which helps make it feel more real, I suppose. Yeah, but it feels more personal. You know, he's pulling from his real experiences and memories and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of characters in it. Mm-hmm. Like out of the main grouping. Seuss might be my favorite. Yeah, I think, he made me, I think it's just because he made me laugh so much. But he also had just j- such a big heart. I'm trying to think who made me laugh the most. Like it might have been percentage wise McGucket. Yeah, oh, man. McGucket. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say too. Mean like a really laugh good to screen time yeah. ratio. Maybe McGucket. Yeah. What about you, Calvin? Oh, uh, it's tough. I do really love McGucket and Seuss. S- some of the things that Grunkle Stan said, though. Sure. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That llama. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know as what? far as like a, a character who like has more depth than than they're letting on. Sure. And you know, deep down they really care, but they put on this air of not caring at all. And the duality of them like being so like caring and everything, but also such a such a swindler, you know. Yeah. Like he's just cheating he so tourists out of so money poorly. daily, <laughs> and he treats his employees, yeah, terrible. But he cares so much about them. Cheating every customer out of money as much as he can. Yeah, you know what I think is one of the most impressive things about the show. I'm always fascinated, especially in comedy shows, of the funny man straight man dynamic. Because the best shows, a character can be a funny man one second and then the straight man the next second you have shows like seinfeld and i love seinfeld but those characters tend to stay in the same roles jerry is the everyday guy sure. that has some eccentric stuff and then he can bounce his eccentric stuff off of george but they can straight man each other too elaine kramer they all have like their own like areas but i feel like something like gravity falls at any second a character can switch from the straight man to the funny role and it's not artificial it doesn't feel out of character does that I make sense so. yeah i mean i think like sure. i think dipper was usually the straight man for yeah. most situations for everything mm-hmm. but i feel like the other characters more so than him yeah would alternate between either one of those yeah and especially in a show that like relies on things being <laughs> absurd like you're already a cartoon so if it has this feeling of non-reality but then your whole basis of the show is that things are really weird yeah it's not just that we're a cartoon we're a in our cartoon world, this town is weird. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot of, like, juggling plates that I don't think that I appreciated when I first started to watch. And now that I'm kind of looking back on it, I'm like, dude, that's that's difficult. And you have to have a real vision to pull that off. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And I think that's what really helped is having – he. I feel like Alex had a good idea of what he wanted to do from the start. Oh, yeah. It sounded you know? like he had plans for a while, yeah. That's huh. why he needed to derail the that fan's theory about the twin. I love that, too. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I love that. All right. Well, like Rick had mentioned, do we want to talk about anything else? Is there anything else to watch, or do we want to dive into some questions? I think questions it's everything from... to watch. I say some questions and just uh, Yeah, we'll go with the questions, and if they don't cover what we want to talk about, we can save yep. a little time at the end to conclude. Mm-hmm. I will read through this one just because it's not really a question, but they, it's Purple Grapes. Grace says not a question. I became a raw writer because of Gravity Falls mm. and wanting to watch your full reactions. It's the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Glad you enjoyed the uh, the full versions of that. So, I mean, yeah. to me, one it's of the too bad we can only put so much, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least we have that there. But it, I, I know it's it's extra steps. But sure. I'm glad people would enjoy it. No, I, we appreciate the support, and honestly, to me, one of the most important things that Blind Wave has done for me is just putting me into a situation where I'm going to watch something that I might never have. I don't know if I ever would have started Gravity Falls. Sure. Maybe I would have thought, oh, I'm older than this, 
sure. was meant for. So maybe it's not my thing. And I would have been missing out on something fantastic. So I have to always thank the supporters and the people that are always putting in their recommendations because if you enjoy it, maybe these guys will too, and that can be fun all its all on its own. So Definitely. And you probably wouldn't have done the puzzles. I would not have done the puzzle myself. No. Yeah. no that, that's really – me and Calvin – we, you know, got a little, had it a little easy in that. Well, we took up a lot of responsibility looking for those keys, but as soon as those keys were found, I'm like, ha, ha, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, my responsibility is fulfilled. <laughs> there were days when you guys are eating lunch, and I'm like with my, <laughs> yeah. with yeah. my notebook, like, Grr. you know, when you I'd done yet, Rick? <laughs> someone was keeping a score of who found the most keys. I'd be interested to see, like, uh, someone uh, was keeping that. Someone was keeping score. I know it wasn't me because usually while that was happening, were, yeah. I was yeah. doing yeah. another puzzle. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. doing the one at the end. Like, it better be me or. Calvin, or it else we have, should be. We it's have probably nothing not we can me. stay yeah. on. Calvin. If you guys lost, it See, probably it's probably each not of them me. a point based I, on difficulty. Maybe, Calvin yeah. should lose a point on that one that was on the in the in the interrogation room. You should lose a point for it. You should lose a point for it. I knew no it was there. Had, you should and lose one. I, I, I knew I it was there. I couldn't find the shot. And I should lose a point for starting us right where it was. No, it and going through the whole episode again. Everyone else loses a point for not seeing it the first time. So anyway, if we can get that information, that'd be fun to have. Um, yeah. What a show. I did it. Eric won by a landslide. Calvin was second. Says RJ Dealers. I, I feel like they should be. I feel like I... I think I found, like, surface-level ones, but Calvin, I feel like... Like, the one with, uh... The window. The tracking one. Yeah. Uh, I don't like, remember the tracking one. Who I remember one. Calvin finding the letter first, and then we're being like, but there's just a letter. And There's he, more. He, you know, there's more was, somewhere. He's usually the one grabbing the hey. you know, the the mouse. So like being able to find that one, I that was probably get, the most impressive. I should get extra points for the first two where we didn't have the key and I still cracked it. Uh, granted, <laughs> uh, Rick cracked it without a key. Where <laughs> sure, <laughs> I, I love, cheat codes. <laughs> I love our first moment of realizing, oh my God, there's key codes in these episodes yeah. that we have. To, how yeah. many have we missed? You know yep. that gotcha. whole realization. Ah. Uh. But yes, uh, Dora says Eric won. And Emma says Eric is in the lead that I saw with 13. Unlucky number 13. <laughs> Final results, Eric 13, Rick 3, Calvin 5, Aaron 3. So Eric yeah. crushed it. Yeah. That was, uh, again, like I feel like a lot of those were surface level, but there were some of them that I didn't find. And hell, there was that one, uh, the Northwest one, where I, I remember specifically not looking for it. Calvin started playing the episode I don't know, Calvin. What was it? Like halfway through? And I remember looking up and we couldn't fucking find it. And we, f we finished the episode, started the episode again, kept going. And it was that screen that I remember not looking at, but it was right there. And I'm like, holy fuck, it's in the window. And that was <laughs> frustrating, number one, but so rewarding when you see it. Uh, yeah. It was at three minutes and 30 seconds. Three minutes? <laughs> Never mind. It was so early. <laughs> uh, and it was me. Yeah. Was he up? Rick, yeah. Rick navigated to that one, one shot. Yeah. One of you guys that control the mice. Mouse, I should the say. Ralara Lowell says, uh, would a live action Gravity Falls work? You know, mm. I don't think it would. I mean, so much is the voice. Like if they were to reboot it and it, make a. It's hard to do weirdness in live action. Like, yeah, just Ad like, like Avatar is supposed to be having a, re like a live action version made, right? It is. And I want to say, like, the key to that is casting. And as much as I, you know, hear things about the original creators not being involved in the Avatar Netflix show, every piece of casting I see is like, huh, I think that's perfect. So I don't know how you do that for Gravity Falls because. Well, first, you make the stands because they have yeah. the same person. Sure. You make them both uh, J.K. Simmons, right? You think? Right? Is that how you go? I, I think, right? Maybe. I feel like that's what you should do. Although the only thing, though, is like rebooting something like this and making a live-action version, I don't know if you're going to hit the same unless you really make it different, different. Yeah. And maybe you make it, maybe you switch it on them, and they think that it's going to be that, but it's really, uh, shoot, McGucket. McGucket. You know, you flip sure. it on them. You trick them all. But. What, what I would want is a point-and-click adventure game. Yeah? I think Gravity Falls would make a fantastic point-and-click adventure. You could incorporate the puzzles. Yeah, could do. You could also just obscure the, the clues and stuff more because sure. it's just a static shot. You can look at that one screen yeah. for as long as you and need to. And it's all but like, contained within, like, one city. Yeah. Well, it would yeah. be so cool to have, like, you're looking at the room and there's dust and stuff, but if you take your mouse and just go across the, the window or mirror or whatever, you can find something hidden mm -hmm. un, on, under, underneath engraved sure. or something. 
You know, sometimes when I, I try to look up fan castings, you just cringe because there's certain trends that, like, well, people are putting Tom Holland in everything. Tom Holland's different. I'm like, I don't know. I don't see that one. But Rob De Niro as Stanley Pines is kind of fun. But <laughs> Jorge Garcia as Seuss, Hurley from Lost. Dude, dude. I kind of see it. Uh, dude, dude, that's dude, not dude, bad. dude. That's not fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> so good on this IMD, uh, BD, I don't know, fan casting thing that's doing. I'd love for him to run up and be like, dude, yeah. dude. Nathan Fillion <laughs> is pressing him. Wait, what was the last one? Nathan Fillion is pressing him. He, that was just him anyway, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that was him. Get the voice actors to come back and take the roles if they can. Yeah. Rick, who is Stephen Fairly? He looks like a... Uh, that's deb- Seamus from WWE. Okay. They Wait, have who's him Wendy? Ma- they have met him as Manly Dan. Uh, who's Wendy? Yes. Wendy is Shalene Woodley? I don't know. I don't recognize some of these Ooh. actors. I was like... But I just... I loved... Uh, no. Yeah. Sometimes fan castings are cool. Sometimes they're not. But sometimes they're heavenly. Like Jorge Garcia. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. G Boo says, "What's y'all's favorite secret you found? Does anyone have like a favorite secret that we discovered about, uh, maybe about Gravity Falls, or maybe hidden within the episode? Like it could be anything. It could be among the story. Sure. I, mean, I have my notebook that has all my notes. I can look for some something. I don't. I can't remember like a secret secret. Hmm. I think my first one is that Saturday, like sitting down, yeah. and solving those puzzles for the first time. Yeah." That's probably my first one. For me, I think it's the first time we found a key, which was the uh, Gulf War episode. Yeah, on the and wall. We found it on the wall, and that was just such a moment. Where we're like, we're in it. We can do this, you know? I think that was my favorite in terms of, like, finding a secret. The one, just, Like when they're on the uh, the golf cart yeah. driving through. Also, mm-hmm. that episode was just really good. Was yeah. really that was the Big Henry big episode. Henry. Oh, oh, I remember, always big remember Henry. Big Henry. Big, big Henry. Yep. Um, yeah. Shoot, what was I going to say? Just the elation of looking for so long and finding it. Yeah. It's just a feeling that we don't get in the day any other every, way. Yeah. Every time we found a key, and one, it was over, but yeah. two, we found it. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Oh, okay. We found it. Oh, then you're on a high, and then they're kind of like, okay, yeah, what's, just, what's, the, what's the code? What's it say? <laughs> just that shared joy. Now, I'd probably say the first time we saw a key mm-hmm. in there at all, you know? Yeah. Like, we had figured out, oh, okay, there's little codes at the end. We do a cipher and we figure it out. Sure. But then this was like, now you need a key. Now we got to watch for a key. And then, like, the revelation of, like, now we have to do this every episode. And then we'd start watching. And it like, got so much harder. Yeah, but th- then you get to the point. <laughs> sometimes I, I know there's a key code in this in this show. And I'm like, damn it. I haven't been watching for it at all. Has anyone been watching? No. Yeah. I see, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> it's, I would, two minutes in, remember, shit. I need to be like, because when we do reactions, sometimes you just kind of let it, you let it hit you, right? And you you go with it, and you you try to pay attention to the story and the character, but but you're also paying attention to each other, and you're yeah. having a good time. But with Gravity Falls, there's this other like thing you turn on in your head, and you're like, no, scan everything. So I'll just be like wide eyed looking at stuff, and I'll just start. There could be a key there. I'll just write a time code down, even if I didn't see the key, just like <laughs> you know, it could be there. Mm-hmm. And I don't. No other show has done that. Where I'm like trying to take in every visual cue. I try to do it with Lost. Yeah. But Lost is like a lot slower. It is. Too. It, like Gravity Falls, like it's a shorter show one, but it just yeah. moves so fast. Like the jokes, like what's yeah. on the screen. Yep. You just don't have enough time. And what was, you guys think, the longest time we looked for a key? It was that one on the board, right? The car, yeah. uh, Stanley Mobile. I yeah. think we watched the episode like two and a half times. I think so too. Yeah. And like I, I remember so. like, what what wait what'd you get like yeah. that was like we were like it must be yeah. a license plate when do you see a car yeah and I was like yeah. I swear I saw in a car at some point and I was like where well, yeah, so, where? I, was like, I so, don't know yeah and the time we took <laughs> to figure it out I solved it right I yeah so. I think you brute yeah. forced it while we no, were you trying told to find us at one point like okay the answer must be on some type of car yeah. or license plate yeah that's yeah. what it was yeah, yeah that's right so I gave you guys a hint it, it is having this. just brute force solved it imagine how long it would take if we didn't have that what if we had to watch it five times yeah I know. So that one was the one that took the longest. Was that the one where we like me and you sat down on the on the floor? We were just too. <laughs> I do remember. We were, that. I remember one point just being like so like burnout, not burnout. Burnout's the wrong word. Just like frazzled, because you know when we do a, a, a really hard day, sometimes 
we're watching a you know a live show. Maybe Aaron and I have two or three live shows that we're doing sure, separately. You stuff. know, then we have to pick up this and this and this, and we're constantly putting ourselves in different worlds and trying to absorb different characters and different things. And I remember looking also looking for that key, and I just had to sit down and just be like. Where the fuck is this thing? I will find it. <laughs> yeah, I remember early on, like we used to have Gravity Falls scheduled for a normal, like, twenty-minute cartoon. Yeah. And then we had to be like, nope. Sure. No, that's not gonna work. We need like. We gotta give it at least an hour. We gotta have a, an hour yeah, of safety it is the time hour in length there. in the schedule, or else it's. I mean, we have more time. We'll toss something in, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, t the I think that one took us the longest, and the one that took us probably the second longest was on the castle. Yeah, I think took the second yeah. one. The Northwest Mansion. The Northwest. Yeah, and yeah, I think I feel like everything at everything besides those we watched through one yeah. time and found it within that one. I think time. the one I Ooh. felt the hopeless on the most hopeless was the dinosaur skeleton one. Really? That one didn't take us nearly as long. It didn't, though. but but the fact that it was not in one shot but in another yeah. just destroyed me. Yeah, sure. on out. That definitely changed us. Like uh, shit. That was the uh, the cult episode, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah that one definitely it was like, well, you can't just. We can't take anything for granted. Yeah, no. no. Like, if well, you can't the castle, like, see that shot again. Yeah, you we have, have to, to search go back. for every pixel for every frame. Yeah, the castle <laughs> one. Sh the castle shows up like in three shots. It does. But only one of those three shots is it have a key in it. Yeah, yeah you're right. So like, there's so many things like ah, oh, yeah, sure, I get what you mean. But and you know yeah, what? Was I was fun. just reminded of actually my favorite thing that was revealed in the show, because uh, in the season two premiere, they had the zombie episode. And even just for fun, I made the sticking point of like, where are these bodies coming from? There's not just human bodies just sure. out in the woods. And, you know, you, we played around with it and made it a bit. And later in that uh, Pacific Northwest episode, it's revealed that ghost, like, there was these terrible, like, landslides. And Natural bodies masters. were spewing all around Gravity Falls. And I'm like, dude, that makes more sense. So I think maybe that's my favorite reveal. In terms of a like personal connection I had to something. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, maybe watching through I'd find some other things or maybe, something. Yeah. But as of right now, like those probably the first time finding a key is my favorite, maybe. Mm -hmm. I do like the two agents. Always oh. being in the background. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Powers and powers and trigger. Really good. Yeah. Ooh, another video. Okay. Let's check it out. Alright, you're getting closer. Just a little closer. Hey, it's getting strong. They could have gone into any one of these. Oh, oh son of a. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 well, we what? know they're good friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I had known about that one from I think even before Gravity Falls started. Someone said something about a portal when Rick and Morty. So wait, so that portal just in that episode has stuff just fall out of it. You just you you see that very briefly, yes. Hmm, in a okay. real episode of Rick and Morty. Yeah. Well, uh, Super Nerd Gavin had said, if you look in the journals or in frames of the new Rick and Morty show, you will see that when Stanford was gone, he was jumping universes with Rick and Birdman. Oh, yeah? So, like, there's different things, I guess, in there that maybe you can see, like, Stan huh. in the background or on the side of the frames or something like that. Like, in this journal? Well, he said about in the journal, and he said also in, in the... Uh, Episodes of Rick and Morty. Oh, maybe in the journal in the show, not the maybe. this journal. I personally haven't noticed any Rick and Morty stuff from this one. But there's, it's very dense, I should say. Leewick says, out of all the episodes, which one has the funniest moment? Can you think of the funniest, funniest moment? moment? I mean, yeah, I look back at the reactions wherever I laugh the hardest, but I'm trying <laughs> to think. Yeah. Of exactly, like... I loved the Gulf War. Like, I loved that. That's one of my... I remember laughing very hard in that one. The first one that comes to mind, and I, I can't even think of what the joke is, but they were carrying a, a pane of glass. Oh, yeah. Pa I, carrying the pane of glass over the water, and they drove through it and broke oh, the glass. That's it. It oh, was on the yeah. boat. That was the yeah. like, second right. episode. I know. That was, that was the ridiculous. first one that comes to mind to me, where I was like, this show is damn funny. The, that one's good. That one's great. Uh, I think the one that comes the most... It was um, oh, good, Eric. I'm trying to think of mine. I'm mine is what it was. Mine is the giant stand balloon that's coming down and crashing into the oh, children. Yeah. I think that might be the funniest <laughs> yeah. it's ever been. That was really because, good because like they were just like even just the lines that the characters were saying like didn't make sense, but it just all serviced a good funny moment. I mean that whole thing just yeah. It was one. like they wrote it 
to get to that moment. Yeah, I you know? think it's... And, like, what was it? Like, the letters had fallen? Yeah, and it, and said, it said, I like, eat kids. I eat kids. kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was just Stan's uh, face. That actually might be my favorite one. I don't know. That one is really good. I feel like there was something with Waddles or a pig, and I, and I feel like it made, like... It made me laugh a lot, and I can't think of what it was. Oh, was it the switch with Seuss? Maybe. Maybe it was the switch oh, that they had yeah. with Seuss and some of the stuff they did with that. There was some really funny stuff in that Because that one. was pretty funny. Because the pig got a girlfriend, right? Yeah. <laughs> we got Seuss married. was the pig, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, now that I know that uh, they were doing some type of like black ops trying to get people off of the scent, Mm-hmm. When they do reveal the twin brother, doesn't isn't there like a line saying like I predicted that a year ago or something like there that? There was, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. there? There's something like that. There's like cool that. moments like that too. Um, I mean, the one that we mentioned earlier was the the llama knowing too much. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. And llama was, knew too much. Oh, that, was so <laughs> that one funny. guy is really good oh, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to look up like cause Stan has such has so many great one liners like children fighting. I can sell this. <laughs> I can sell tickets to this. <laughs> Duck Detective was hilarious. Yeah. Duck Detective, yeah. Uh, we got so many cool like shirts and stuff sent by people too for the show. Mm-hmm. And, and hats. Oh, the oh pool my God. kid. Hats. Pops. Kind of the stuff. pool kid. The pool kid. <laughs> yeah, the mermaid. That poor pool kid. <laughs> He's episode. just that stuck pool in the kid. pool filter great. forever. <laughs> yeah. uh. Let me see. We had uh, Mementox who just says, he was just telling us that there's items that go in the portal in Gravity Falls and they pop out in Rick and Morty. So what we just watched. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's just cool that that's a, a thing that has happened. Um, the uh, Shape Shifter episode with Mark Hamill, when he shows Dipper uh, what it's going to look like when he's dead. Do you remember that? No. There's a, It's a really funny moment, but Seuss goes, Ha! Huh, good luck sleeping tonight, dude. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> that obviously had a very big reaction. Regina Tatos just asks... Uh, while we're talking about favorite funny moments, yep. what was your favorite episode? Ooh, um, favorite episode. Golf War. I, 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 I want to say Golf War. I think there's a few things with that. I, I yeah. remember the Big Henry one. It was the first time we noticed that there was a key in it. Yeah. You know? It was the first it time, was, like, uh, Pacifica was a character. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, sure. Like a likable character. <laughs> like, it really right? kind of introduced her in a different way and the way her family was and everything and, you know, the whole butler and all that kind of stuff. And I really like that. I also just really enjoyed the story of the, the golf balls. And wasn't Patton Oswald one of the golf balls? I think so. Right? Like, I'm, I feel Maybe. like I'm remembering all those moments. Yeah. And, like, that Something one is like just, that. I think as a whole, is just one of my favorites. After that, I'd probably jump towards some of the later episodes mm-hmm. um, that I think just were really creative and, like, having to rescue Mabel and that kind of stuff. Like, I really enjoyed that, too. And the stuff it had to, like, you had to, like, kind of face yourself a little bit in some of those later, like, Bill episodes. Captain Cold, we can't ask and tell you. We can't answer this one or else we'll run out of stuff. Captain Cold just says, if you had unlimited budget, didn't have to worry about laws or a hint hunt, what would you do? You'll see. We don't want to tell you. We can't tell you everything. That's either a then tease it or a it. threat. <laughs> 12 Cat says, have you seen the story behind Alex's jacket that appears in the finale? If not, maybe one of your behind-the-scenes uh, clips should find that. Uh, one of your behind-the-scenes should find that video clip. I believe it was talked about in one of the episode's commentaries, but I've seen it on YouTube. Okay. I don't yeah, know I don't anything know about, about the jacket. Yeah, I'm not sure. But um, just like Gravity Falls, Oregon, you can always go deeper. You never find the real answers. Um, there are a couple of things talking about a film theory of Gravity Falls. Okay. I don't know what that is. Uh, film theory is usually a, a YouTube um, video. Did you react to film theory on yeah. Bill Lives? goes in more depth about oxalotl and a lot of stuff um that's from the nice nice fin and sure. also from horus we both okay. ask about those those are cool that's the type of stuff that i'd like to absorb i think just watching on my own i, I do like uh film theorists though as a channel and then uh super dora as well as captain cold both mentioned um a similar thing super dora said have you noticed that in the Northwest Haunted Mansion episode, when Dipper changes into wood, he is stuck in the same posture as Shapeshifter at the end of that episode. Mm. Um, and Captain Cold words it as, not sure if you know this, but the look that the Shapeshifter gives Dipper of his death is the same pose Dipper is in when he gets turned into wood. Interesting. Huh. That's cool. I like that. Which I did not know that. Hmm. That's one of those things where I think re-watching 
there's just going to be a lot of things hopefully now knowing oh that's really cool oh yeah. look at this nod to this like in the very beginning of that one video we watched i love the ideas of here are the little things that alex tossed in yeah to give hints of some future stuff and like it's not focused on it's in the background sure and i just i like that stuff so does that mean that technically dipper was dead when he was turned into wood i mean maybe yeah maybe it'd be hard it's not dark, to be but i like it Sizolar Patrick says, I don't know if you found this, but here we go. In the finale, Bill kills the Time Baby. Uh -huh. The end cryptogram says it will take 1,000 years for Time Baby's molecules to reconstitute. I remember and that. And when he's back, he's going to be very cranky. Yep. In the first or second episode, we see Blendon Blandon and Dipper and Mabel use time travel tape, but accidentally go too far, 3,012 when we can see the Time Baby rampaging in the city with laser eyes. <laughs> Actually, the first appearance of Time Baby. <laughs> That's oh, great. Okay. <laughs> that's really good. That does make sense. Huh. So that's his cranky moment there? Yeah. <coughs> that's really good. I like that one. I like that too. Um, I think that might be... Uh, Wheel Magic says, I would totally watch a spinoff show with both Stans bonding while on adventure. What would you like to see if that show existed? Yeah, I mean, I, I hear that Alex tried to pitch that as a as a show, but it didn't go through. So really, those adventures. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they were fighting like an octopus. Like he was, he punched a Cthulhu monster. Like That's yes, true. I want to see <laughs> it's it. True. That's true. And he's a boxer. He is a boxer. Um. Yeah, I imagine it would be hard to get greenlit if kids are not stars of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I mean making a more adult version but watch a like <laughs> mature see, up. i wouldn't want a adaptation live action to gravity falls but i would watch like a dark live action old man starring spinoff <laughs> of their adventures so everything <laughs> happened in the, in the cartoons real yeah. and now we've this is the continuation in live action yeah i'd watch that <laughs> well i mean in another universe in the in the final episode or final two episodes uh -huh. or whatever it was when they were going through those bubbles into those like sausage universe and all that. Yeah. One of those was real people. It yes. Was. And it showed like the voice actors being there, which also had a longer version. Um, I've seen it on oh, okay. like Twitter or YouTube or something like that. that was but so there's awesome. a longer section of that instead of them just screaming, ah, like the Dipper voice actors, like, what's wrong with me? Why do I look weird? Yeah. And the Wendy voice actress is like, speak for yourself. I look good. <laughs> like that was like, a, <laughs> it was really fun. Oh, Overlord has an interesting one. In the wax episode, Stan gets devastated at his own wax death. But now we know why, because he has a twin who he feels responsible for. We yeah, saw that. That's that's yeah, that one that video was, was talking cool. about that yeah. with Alex was talking yeah, about I, like the... I was paying attention to something else, though. I just, that just clicked for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was in like the first part of the first video. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it was probably because I didn't hear it the first time. Oh, it might have yeah. been. Uh, Wheel Magic says, have you seen on one of the pages in the journal that says what does it mean in big letters at the top I've there's seen. a silhouette of a connection to another famous show what does it mean what does it mean in big letters at the top there's a silhouette of a connection to another famous show this might take me a while they have a page number do they i'm no. going from the middle forward right really? backwards i don't know what page number and i don't know what silhouette would it be what so. does it mean but that is what is said here what do you mean <laughs> Marcus DeBoss says, if you guys were each characters in the show, who do you think your character would become close friends with the quickest? Probably a pool kid. <laughs> I don't pool know. Pool kid the quickest? <laughs> oh, uh, what does it mean? Do okay. So this is a, uh, this has a bunch of silhouettes. Okay. Now, what was the thing that you said, Aaron? So in big letters at the top, there is a silhouette of a connection to another famous show. That's all it says. So, so I got like a Cthulhu monster. On one of the pages in the journal that says, what does it mean in big in the top? So what silhouettes do you see? Uh, is that the, Grogu? Where? Down here. Grogu? Uh, that could be, I guess. Here, Aaron, I'll, I'll give you the book. Probably too early for Grogu. Maybe yeah. Yoda. I mean, there's like the Loch Ness, there's a Yeti, there's an alien, there's a mermaid, there's a Cthulhu, it's a giant squid. There's flying monkey. From uh, Wizard of Oz, but I don't really notice a, uh, a silhouette from, a, from another. Gremlin? I think that's a gremlin, Rick. I think it's. Well, you think it's uh, a mogwai? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it's Could like be. Gizmo. Gizmo. Oh, they said it's on the left. There's a Ms. Pac-Man. <laughs> I don't recognize the <gasps> staff. Eric. What? Oh my gosh. What? So see Ms. Pac-Man on the left? 
Yeah. Go one right. Right? I, is I that not the it. weird contraption that was created in Rick and Morty that was like a advertisement for something that had like weird tentacles and it looked like a piece of broccoli? I have it. Do you seen remember it. that? I don't recognize it. Was, it was uh, it was like a, I don't know, like a dildo or a sex toy or something. They called it the plumbus. plumbus. Maybe that might be right. Chat it might be the plumbus. Plumbus. But I think that's what that silhouette is. I think it's the silhouette of the, the thing they were selling. Plumbus. Chad is saying plumbus or plumbus. Oh uh, yeah, okay. What? Eric, Calvin said plumbus ten times. I, I had no. I went to an image <laughs> on Google and found it. <laughs> do, you, do you see? It, it wasn't like a sex toy or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's in his book. Yeah. There's a sex toy it's in there. An, it's Disney an didn't approve that. Device. <laughs> ah. mm. And Aaron Everybody, everyone yeah. in the Rick and Morty universe knows Aaron. what it does, so nobody has ever explained how it works. Show them, show them the sex toy. <laughs> show the silhouette. Yeah. It's right here next to Ms. Pac-Man. You see it? Am I doing it? Mean, I got to wait and see if I'm holding it right. No, oh, yeah, you're doing good. Right above Cthulhu. Right next to the arrow. I don't think the plumbus is a sex toy. Uh, well, not with that attitude. <laughs> Anything's yeah. a sex in toy. Trivia, <laughs> in, in, in the trivia of this Rick and Morty wiki, it does say the silhouette of a plumbus is seen in the Journal Three of Disney Channel original TV series Gravity Falls. Um, we didn't say about who would become friends with the quickest. I guess I didn't say anyone. I would go with, depending on who my character is and how things work out, I'd go with either Seuss, Seuss. or Wendy. Sure, I would say probably Seuss. McGucket. McGucket would be the one I you would become parties. friends with. He parties hard. Yeah, and he doesn't go around wife. a big crowd. You know, he stays. You know, I don't like big crowds. Yeah, I'd probably go Seuss. If I was a kid, it might be Mabel. Yeah, agreed. Sure. She always cared about, like a lot about her friends, whereas Dipper could be a little distracted. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. By Wendy, like Aaron would be. All the rest of us said Seuss, and you said, eh, probably Seuss or Wendy. That's what I said. In a creepy way. I did not. And I also you stipulated, said it. depending on how my character it was is inserted to the show and what exactly I am, <laughs> I will pick one of those two. So that's where I went. Cartoon. Um, all right. Uh, I think that's most of the questions of things that we've uh, – we, I think we've covered a lot of these other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, things so no this was great uh, make sure you guys are letting us know too like if you like these type of podcasts that are a little more uh they're focused. not so general they're a little more focused on things what type of uh, topics would you like us to check out but i will say the the thing i like the mo most about this podcast is getting to know alex hirsch a little bit more and it seems like he's a really singular type of creator like maybe only him could have made a show like this, which is really inspiring to think like what type of show can only you make or what type of art can only you make. And at least that guy has done the work and put in the effort to, to bring that out. So maybe that's something we all can learn from. Sure. And now I just need to look through this book and rewatch the, the show and Gotta see do what it again. new things I missed that I could learn from to make. It's true. Well, Aaron, there's always, there's always next summer. Next summer. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, guys, I think that's it for the podcast. Did you guys have anything else or any other mentions of anything you wanted to bring up? And I could talk about Gravity Falls for a long time, yeah. but oh yeah, no, really good. Uh, sad it's gone, but got to move on. Sure. Always more shows. Kyle, play that intro one more time.